Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So at this point, we know that ES is trading at fresh all-time highs, and we've been using the resistance areas in the other markets to uh, time or identify spots in the S&P where the market can get short-term exhausted and limit the upside. So overnight, we were using the 1260 to 1262 area in Russell to uh, time kind of where S&P might top out. And, uh, you know, so far, 60 to 62 has been the area where we've seen some um, resistance in the Russell hold up. Now, you know, bigger picture, it doesn't have to hold there, but short term, that 60 to 62 area is um, active resistance in the Russell. And um, we know that ES has been leading to the upside, and, you know, it's the market that has already made fresh all time highs while these other markets are playing catch up. But even though that makes the S&P the strongest market, also limits the upside potential in the S&P because it has already made the major move, right? So heading into today, we do have to be careful on where we're initiating any long trades uh, just because the upside potential could be fairly limited, especially in ES. See, the other markets still actually have a lot of room to catch up, and that's why, uh, you know, yesterday we saw a bigger move, a catch up move in the Russell, whereas ES didn't really put in that magnitude of an upside move. So at this point, we do have to be careful on initiating longs. And even the longs we take, we have to play defense on those positions. So heading into the open, you know, we have the overnight resistance at 3175 to 3375. Uh, bear in mind that, you know, we are at all-time highs, so uh, there isn't any major resistance up here, right? This is first time up, and um, a breakout above 3175 to 3375 could carry the S&P uh, higher, but there's no hard resistance, so there's no saying where it's actually going to stop, and that's why using the other markets to time and exit in ES is working out really well. So if, you know, Russell or NQ hits uh, short-term resistance, then that's a way to time the exit in the S&P. Um, on the downside, we have pre-market support 2475 to 26. Uh, that is still fairly aggressive location uh, for buyers to be active. Uh, below that, the conservative location is 20 to 22 half, the initial support zone. On first test, that's an area that can be defended and uh, buyers can be active there for a move back up towards 26 and 2875. So that's a better spot for uh, buyers to step in on any kind of pullback here. Below that, we have 17 half, a important high volume node, and then 15 quarter is a naked VPOC. That would be quite an extended pullback, but it really wouldn't change the uh, bullish structure in the S&P. So even getting a pullback down to 20 to 22 half or 17 half wouldn't really impact the overall bullish structure. So, uh, you know, buyers can still defend each of those areas on any kind of pullback. And if the market's really strong, then even 2475 to 26 is actually a zone that can be defended. It's just that that is more aggressive trade location overall. And, uh, you know, if trading that zone, we just have to be a bit more defensive. Um, looking at the other markets, uh, like I said, 60 to 62 is active resistance in the Russell and a breakout above 60-62 in TF can um, result in a accelerated move up towards the 66-67 to 67 area and possibly up towards 1270-71, uh, to 71, which would be the next, uh, you know, key resistance area in TF. So, you know, it's going to be important, I think, at this point to uh, really pay attention and be in sync with these other markets because that can help us time an entry and exit in the S&P. Uh, but, you know, ES is the strongest of uh, the uh, equity index markets right now. And uh, for that reason, even even if we're going to get a pullback, you know, it doesn't have to be a strong downward momentum type pullback. And, uh, you know, that's why we're still going to be cautious on the short side in ES because it is the strongest market. And uh, for that reason, it may not pull back as much even if we see a uh, you know, slightly bigger pullback in the other markets. So right now, the focus is still going to be on the long side, but uh, because ES is so extended to the upside, we have to be just very mindful of trade location and uh, 
just play defense on any long setups that we're taking at aggressive prices. So, you know, if we're not getting that quick reaction and uh, the trade doesn't start working relatively soon, then it's probably best to just, uh, you know, get out and wait for a better spot where, uh, you know, you have better trade location and you have a little bit more edge in that trade. So right now, um, you know, up here at these higher prices, uh, it's uh, it's risky to enter long, uh, you know, above 28.75. It is a riskier trade. Now, if something sets up in real time where, you know, there's uh, confluence of real time support as well, and again, still playing defense, we can take a long setup, then it's something we'll still consider. But, uh, you know, the uh, better spots are obviously going to be on, you know, a deeper pullback into support. But these higher prices are a risky spot for buyers, and anyone entering long at these higher prices is, uh, you know, going to be in a vulnerable spot where, uh, you know, even a slight pullback can stop them out and does not impact the overall bullish structure of the market. So, uh, Right now, it may be better to simply sit out and, um, you know, either allow these markets to catch up or wait for the market to uh, pull back to a good enough uh, location where it makes sense to enter long and where, you know, you can at least have a little bit of holding power for now. Um, you know, that's kind of the main idea. So let's see if the buy side can maintain control this morning. Volume still running uh, below average, relatively light. There's no major econ report due later in the day. So, you know, we can still more or less consolidate and balance in a range, but just balance at higher prices. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. Let's see if the buy side can maintain control, especially in the other markets, and we'll take it from there.